Hello YouTube, I'm APC, and today I'm making another tutorial for you guys. Today I'm making another tutorial as part of my swing series, and today's tutorial is going to be about tic-tac-toe. We're going to learn how to make tic-tac-toe in Java using swing. And tic-tac-toe is an example of a game you can make in swing. It's, there's not a, um, it's one of the ones that works out fairly well, actually. So today we're also going to learn some new concepts to add to a repertoire after the previous two, for a few tutorials, and those concepts are layouts and action listeners. Layouts are very useful. Whenever you add, add new components to the room, what layout you have decides exactly where and how it's added to the room. So it's very, that's very useful. And then we're also going to learn about listeners, or action listeners in particular. Listeners, um, whenever you have a program reacting to user input, it's using listeners. So listeners are listening in to what's happening on the individual components, and it's making stuff happen based on that. So we're going to use action listener, which is used to respond to buttons and other swing components. So um, that's that's all for right now. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my class. Public class tic tac toe, and then set up the method because that's what's gonna be in here. Static void main string args. Now this is gonna be our frame. So we're gonna go ahead and have this extend J frame. Extends J frame. And now I'm going to go ahead and make our panel. Uh, J panel P equals uh, up, 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 equals new J panel. Panel is going to contain all of our buttons for our tic tac toe thing. By the way, uh, maybe you'd be interested to see what our finished products can look like, and I'll just go ahead and show you. So this is what our finished products can look like. We're going to have a bunch of buttons set up, and when you click them, it's going to change. Click them a second time, will be circle. All right. So that's what we're going to be making. Just thought I'd show you that real quick. Alright, so our J panel is going to contain all the buttons that we're, we're going to be able to store the X's and the circles. And that's what our panel's for. So let's go ahead and import our frame in panel. Import Java X dot swing dot J panel. By the way, fun fact, know that Java X stands for Java extension. It's, it's an extension with a lot of extra cool features including swing and J frame alright okay so now we're going to go ahead and create our nine buttons it's not going to be the standard button you might notice that I have an XO button class set up here we're going to program that in a second but for now we're going to go and make new objects of it so XO button and this is going to have our um, this is going to store all of our buttons they interact with and it's going to be an array because we have nine of them so new XO o button and nine because we're gonna have nine of them. Alrighty. So we don't want to reference reference this from a static context. I actually made that mistake when I was making this. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new version of it, new tic tac toe. And then we're gonna go ahead and set the constructor to public tic tac toe. Alright, step one, call the super the constructor method of our parent J frame. And we're gonna set title, tic tac toe. And let's see, set size. Let's make it 400 by 400 because we want it to be square because it's going to be, you know, it's gonna be set up in a square grid. And in my original tutorial, I said there's a couple things needed to set up, and one of them I actually forgot, which is set default close operation. It's easy to forget because you don't really notice the, the problem right away, but when I was in my original uh, tutorial on Swing, what happened was I'd close it out, the window would close, but it wouldn't close in command prompt, command prompt which meant the program was still running, even though it was invisible. So that's why this is important, to make sure the program actually closes when you close the window. Alright, and I'm still probably forgetting one, but <laughs> let's go and do the set visible thing. Visible and true. And I, I just thought of something. Let's let's change uh, whether it can be resized or not. So resizable. Set so that to false. Actually, you don't want it to be resized because then you get weird rectangular, and we don't want that. Okay, I think this is about everything. Now for the new stuff. We're going to set the layout. So um, everything's going to be inside our J panel. Our J panel. So we're going to set the layout inside the panel. So Peter, set layout. New grid layout. And that's three comma three. So we're setting, we're creating a new object of grid layout, which is going to be the grid layout that's going to be applied to our 
um, program. And this in particular this layout is going to be set to the panel. So anything that's added to the panel from now on will be aligned according to this layout. Now, layouts are always present in Swing. If you do, don't set one, the default is actually flow layout. Flow layout is where first object you add will be placed in the top left, then it'll, they'll move right until it can't move right anymore, then it'll move down a row. Basically just like in the same order that you, as if you're writing on something. So that's what how flow layout is, but this is grid layout that we're going to be using. Let's go ahead and import that. So import Java X dot or Java dot AWT dot grid layout. Notice that this isn't part of swing class, which means that you can actually use this layout without using swing. I don't really know how, but that's, that's interesting. So let's go ahead and add our buttons. For uh, int i equals zero, i is less than nine for our nine buttons and i increment. We're going to go and add each of our nine buttons. So first things first, let's create them because this only creates slots for the nine buttons. It doesn't actually create them. So uh, buttons i that index of the array equals new xo button, and um, we're going to set up the constructor to take nothing. And then we're going to go and add that particular button to the panel. So I guess it'd be p dot add. And then we're going to add the panel to the room. And that's all for our tic-tac-toe class. We just need to set up this XO button class to be able to change images when you click on it. Because we already got it added. Now we're going to set this up. Public class XO button. And this is going to be a lot like uh, the J button. We're going we're to make some changes to it. So we're going to go and say extend J button. And of course, we have to import J button. Import Java X dot swing dot J button. Okay, set up our constructor. We don't need a main method for this one because it is not the driver class. It's not what starts the program or other class. No, no parameters for the constructor. Don't need to worry about that. And let's see, how should we start this off? All right, so all this thing needs to do is it needs to have an image set up. And when we click on it, it needs to scroll through its images. So we're going to have two variables, image icon x. And well, we're going to have two image icon variables image icon x and image icon 0. And these, these are the images that we're going to use for x and 0 respectively. Image icon is basically a nice thing in Swing, which creates an icon that will take care of a lot of uh, things for you, like it'll keep track of the dimensions of that particular image, and it'll hold it there for you. You won't have to call it from the computer every single time. So we're going to go ahead and import image icon as well. And that's swing.image icon. Okay. Now we're going to need a variable which represents which image we're currently on. Are we on nothing? Are we on X? Or are we on zero? Or circle? So it's the, those are only three values, so we can almost use boolean. Boolean requires two, so we need to move one up from boolean, which is byte. Byte is, is even though it's the smallest number type we have, it's still overkill because it can store like 128 different values when we only need three, but anyway. And value is equal to zero. And let me just make a comment here explaining how I'm going to set this up. Zero would be nothing. One would be x, and two would be a uh, circle. All right. First thing, constructor. We're gonna s give uh, these x and zero um, variables uh, values. So we're making new Im image icon, and right here we need the URL of the image that we want it to represent. Now I have over here in my directory. I have these two images. I have the circle right there. And I have the X right there. So these are stuff I threw together in paint.net. And so we need the URL URL for that one or the where it's located. And what we're gonna find it is we're gonna say this dot get class. This will give us the folder that the program is located in. And this will will grab a resource from that folder. Okay, and the resource we want to grab is x.png. At least that's what I called mine. If you made yours something different, you would call it something different, obviously. Uh Copy that and paste it over here. And we'll go with the same process for O, or circle. So just place the X's with, with O's, and that's all for that. Next, we're going to need to set up action listener. I mentioned in the intro how action listeners work, sort of. Um, the way it works is, okay, how should I go about explaining it? Okay, listeners in general. Um, when you uh, perform acts, like when you press the button, there's no one around to hear it. It's sort of like that whole paradigm of, or the paradox, I guess, if, if, it, if a tree falls in the middle of nowhere, and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, that's a paradox in computer science as well, because if someone presses a button in the middle of nowhere, 
and you don't have anything to hear it, it doesn't make a sound, we don't know. So we need to make sure we have ears there to listen in on it. We need that that's why we need a listener. So the listener we're gonna use is action listener. Import that. Java.awt.event.action listener list in -er. Alright. And we're also gonna need event as well, but I'll explain that later. Dot event dot action event. Bingo. Action listener is an interface, so we need to imp go and implement that. That's saying that we are a certified action listener because we implement that interface. Implement. There we go. Action listener. There we go. And to make us certified implementers of action listener, we need to have the methods from action listener. Action listener has one. Some other listeners have like two or three or even more than that. So, but the one for action listener is public void action performed. Make sure you spell that exactly the way I did it, otherwise it's not going to work because this method is one that we're implementing. And it has one parameter, action event. That is the event that occurred. Like if it's a button, the only thing that can happen is if you press it, but if, like for instance, if you're working in the key listener, then the event could be w then the event could uh, be different depending on which key you press. That's what that's the whole point of this, really. All right. So now we need to do the whole thing I was talking about earlier about adding an ear somewhere to trigger. So we're gonna say um, add action list enter this. If you uh, created the button from this class, like in this case we are the button, so we're adding it to ourselves. But if we were like in this uh, this class and we added and we added a button we wanted to listen to the button, then we would say. Or, or that we would say v dot or in this case we are the one who's triggering the action and we are also listening in on it. That's what this thing is it's saying. Who's triggering it and who's listening in on it. We're listening on it because we're the one who has it implemented and we're the one that has this thing to it. Alright, so this will ensure that it triggers when we press the button. So now when this triggered we want it to scroll through our values. Alright, so we're going to increase value by one. Okay, so if it's 0, increase to 1. If it's 1, increase to 2. If it's 2, increase to 3. But if it, we don't want to increase to 3. We want it to go back to 0. So if that happens, or just to be sure, we're going to say value mod equals 3. So this will, well, mod. I actually have a tutorial talking all about mods because it's a quite a significant thing that I don't really talk about much in schools. But what this is basically saying is if it's more than or equal to 3, keep subtracting 3 from it until we're at. Or two or below three, so if you if if the value is equal to six, or okay, that's more than equal to three. Let's subtract three from it. All right, now it's three. It's still more than equal to three. Let's subtract three from it again to zero. So if six percent of three would be equal to zero. All right, so this will just make sure that this has the effect of bringing it back down to zero after we've exceeded two. All right, so now let's set up our image again based on our value. So we're going to use a switch. This way we'll be able to test it based on whatever is in our value. Now, uh, if you really study your syntax, you know that only integers work with switch. We have a byte here. But that works because since our integer is more general than byte, we can use a byte here. But if you were trying to use a long variable, long variable in here, it probably wouldn't work. So we have multiple cases. When it's equal to 0, do that. When it's equal to 1, do that. And when it's equal to 2, do that. All right. When it's equal to 0. So that's when we have nothing. We're going to use set icon. And I looked in the API before this to figure it out. And set icon is a method inside the J button, which will work. Or actually, it's not located inside J button. It's located something. It's located when the parents have J button, abstract button to be specific. But that's where the set icon is located, and it does exist. I, I looked it up. So, there you go. What should we set it to? You have to put an image icon there to what we want to set it to. Well, if we have nothing, then we want to be null, because we want to be set to nothing. Okay. Now we're going to say break. This is very important working with switch, because if you don't say break, it'll keep moving on. In this case, I guess it doesn't matter, but a lot of times you have a default thing at the end. And if you don't put break there, it'll keep checking things until it reaches default, and then it'll always run the default. But just a good habit to keep. All right, so uh, case one, that's when we have x. Let's say set set icon, and we want to set equal to x, our image icon x. And the semicolon goes outside. There you go. And break. 
and when it's equal to 2, we're going to set icon to circle or the 0 or 0 or whatever. And then we're going to break again. And that is all for this tutorial, basically. It should work. Well, obviously, there's probably going to be a glitch, and I'm running the program still. But now I can compile it. Java C, tic tac toe dot Java. That worked first try. That's that's quite amazing actually. It doesn't happen very often. Now, one thing that I I meant to talk about this for all my swing tutorials, but I forgot to do it my first two, so I'm gonna start start off now. You can add splash screens. It's kind of fun. You can do it from the command line. You before you type down normally you say Java tic tac toe, but before that you say dash splash semicolon and then you put the file that you wish to show up in your splash screen. So for me that's tic tac toe dot png. Just a fun thing. Kind of cool. So now when I press enter, it, it, won't, it won't be there for long, but it'll show a splash screen just for a little bit. There you go. You can see they're just for a little bit. Little thing I threw together. Cool, right? Alright, here's the thing we just threw together. And here is our program. Working fairly nicely. And as you can see, it goes um, resets once we reach uh, when it, once value reaches two. So that means this modular thing works quite well. And now you can play tic tac, tic -tac toe with your friends and swing if you want to. It's a lot of fun. So I guess it'll go something along the lines of this uh, tick. Okay, you go. Let's see. I'll go here. All right, I'll go here. Oh, I see what you're doing there. Caught that. All right, see so if you catch this. Oh. I just beat myself. There you go, X wins. So to make this better, you'd probably want to add logic to you know check who's winning and then make alternate turns. But I'll leave that to you. I'll let you um, try and figure that out because th that's nothing to do with swing. That's all about logic and that kind of stuff. So, but I think I'm going to make a tutorial about that anyway. So I challenge you to do it on your own. And if you have trouble with it, I'm going to have a tutorial about that coming up. Link in the description. All right. So done. Now, for the rest of the... So, as in the beginning, this is part of my swing series. Uh, if you wish to watch the rest of them, I have links to all of them up on the screen. I should have like eight of them or so at the end. So, the, they're all about making cool programs in, screen, in swing and a lot of cool options. That's it. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I always enjoy um, hearing, hearing your feedback. It's always very helpful to me. I, I, I read all of the comments and try to use them to make my tutorials better. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.